a year. Okay, then Peter Preble II actually covered up the original entrance and actually put doors in here to keep it temperature and humidity back up to the, what, what it should be. Okay, so back in 1897 when people came up here to see the tour, take the tour, it cost 50 cents, and 50 cents in today's money is somewhere between 70 and 80 dollars. So when they came up here from the Hotel Colorado where they bought their tickets, they had to ride up here, walk up here, something like that, and spending that kind of money, they came up here in their Sunday go to meet and bets. Mm -hmm. uh, suits for men, long skirts for the ladies, and what's interesting is when you see the original entrance as we're going out, it will be up to our left over where the photographer was, okay? You'll see that what you have to do to get into the cake is slide down on your bum. That's Australian <laughs> for buttocks, okay? And you're spending all that kind of money to come in and look at electric lights. There you go, okay? <laughs> Oh, oh, big, big, big. oh my gosh, oh. this is beautiful. Yeah. If you have up there, I'll give you a hint. It's called tree roots. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Where the white line is, you can understand why oh, people right. had to use that hand line to climb up here. Oh, wow. Oof. That was a four. Okay, mm. now we're going to walk down this way so we, we can see around. where the party starts. This is where all the fun things start to happen. Mm -hmm. um, my glasses is clogged up. I can't see why. They were glowing a bright green. Yeah. Oh, yes. So that green glow is what we call fluorescence, um, and fluorescence is just the rock getting so excited that it starts to have electrons trade places, producing that green glow. Um, yeah, and uh, if you don't believe me, I can prove it fairly easily. After you're done taking those photos, guys, I'm going to ask you to shut off those phones and close your eyes. And everything, and I do have quite a few hours underground. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I'm just so amazed. I come in here, and I wish I hadn't slept through geology, geography, geology. <laughs> you know, I did get a B, but uh, that's about it. Okay, so now I'm learning more about things that I already thought I knew. So here's the ding dang deal. In that cloud room up on the ceiling, it looked like some. Uh, say white onion slices or something. Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty neat because this little bit of calcite, like right there, is different than a lot of other places in the cave. Now, the American Indians knew about these places, and they would actually go, and when they saw those cloud things, actually scrape a little bit off and would eat it, and that's their toms to help settle their stomach, <laughs> okay? But they didn't know anything about this cave because this cave wasn't dis discovered until after they had left the area. Pretty cool? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's the ding dang deal about how this, this cave was made that's different from a lot of other limestone caves. 1.5 million years ago, the water table was up this high. And when we're talking water table, I'm talking about the water that's in the Glenwood Hot Springs pool or the Iron Mountain Hot Springs pools, okay? So that is hot water with a little bit of sulfuric acid in it. That sulfuric acid doesn't do anything to us when we're bathing in that. Yet what it did was eat away a little bit more of this limestone, and especially as it went down further and further. We are the longest cave in Colorado, and we have some of the largest cave rooms and the best decorated cave room in Colorado. <laughs> this cave only goes down about four miles. I know it's nothing compared to, uh, I don't know if anyone's been in Mammoth Caves in yeah. Kentucky. <laughs> if you've been there, you know it's only 573 miles that they have mapped. What? 573 miles that they have mapped? Oh my gosh. 
People had to be in there for years at a time. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to walk on down here. You could even see the bones in them hmm. because they were so translucent and everything. Okay, so what we have here are natural pools. Okay, we haven't done anything because they take a long time to form. All right, stuff that's hanging down from the ceiling along in here. These are called stalactites because they want to remain tight to the ceiling. Okay, then we have little these bump things are down here that are called stalagmites because someday they might make it to the ceiling. <laughs> no, no, they really never do. Okay, so that's one of those myths. Okay, that's what we talk about anyway. Then we have something really neat right here. Very good example of what we call a column. And a column is where a stalactite and a stalagmite meet. Very neat. You know, this is holding up the whole cave. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you believe that, I've got some really good swamp property. <laughs> okay. Then we have some things we call, well, there's like tusks okay, or antlers or whatever, and then we have some stuff called cave bacon. Um, most of the tour guides agree that this is Walmart bacon, because there's nothing but fat on that thing. Okay, we do have better bacon around in here, around down there, there's more bacon way down in this area here, and then we have bacon right up in here, and then we have some, this is some vandalism that happened back in the oh. 40s or 50s, okay? Because some of these things right in here are called soda straws. There are a lot of these soda straws hanging down. A really prime example of good-looking soda straws are down in the barn area in the King Row Tour, okay? Some of them are this long. And what the thing about the soda straws that's way cool is that the soda straws are hollow all the way through. What happens is, as the water percolates down through the, the ground and the earth and the rock and everything, picks up calcite. And as the water comes down, it actually goes right through the middle of the soda straw. When the water hits the bottom of the soda straw, the air makes the calcite either deposited at the end of the soda straw, around the soda straw, or falls down to the floor and starts making stalagmites. Me. Okay, here's the ding-dang deal here. This is called the cloud room, okay? And if you look at these cloud things up on the ceiling, it's very interesting. We're going to walk down this way so we can social distance, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. We're thinking you're going to get away, huh? <laughs> but no, we have to see what it was like back in 1895. <laughs> And I had one very smart fellow a couple years ago that said, Wow, I didn't realize they had lighters back then. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't a bit. This was the first one. <laughs> okay, get ready. I'm going to turn out the light, and we're going to take a, about a minute, maybe, oh to acclimate our eyes to this amount of light. Okay? Oh, you Here you go. No, I sure hate to be mining or something with something like this. Okay? Yeah. How are we doing? Yeah. When we were learning how to be... Well, that's right. Uh, cave, do cave tours and everything. They said, oh, bring your light down here and make sure people see their feet and that it's okay. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, everybody's got two feet. And, um, and there is a light bulb in the kitchen that has been on for at least 130 years. Wow. Now, dang it, mine just wear out like after a year. <laughs> What's the deal? Okay? So the Edison light bulb is very noticeable in that it has a heart-shaped filament in the middle of the light bulb. The next light bulb we're going to go see uh, as we're walking down here, it gives off a lot more light, is called the uh, Marconi light bulb. And the Marconi light bulb has a basket-shaped filament. Okay? Now then, do you know what Marconi's uh, famous for? Radio. Yeah! Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, about once a week we have somebody that knows that. It's radio. Do you know what a radio is? Show them. <laughs> I didn't think we had those anymore. Come on, let's walk down this way. We're walking in the past and getting a little... Hey, come on down here, watch your heads, everybody. Here's the Marconi light bulb. Huh. Boy, let's sit. Give off a lot more light. And here's Jim Bobina, a smart ass, okay? These are GE. <laughs> I don't know if they're GE or not. That's pretty cool. Looks like a horseshoe crab back over there. It also looks like a wasp nest over here. It does, doesn't it? Doesn't it? But it's all rock. Uh, bees wouldn't be down this far oh, no. because we're 70 or 80 feet below. Hmm, but those little frogs look kind of spicy. Don't they? They look like they're growing. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, they do. Well, it's